Hello again. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, today we're going to be making 1,4-dioxane by the uh, dehydration of ethylene glycol with sulfuric acid. It's kind of been done a bit before, you know, most of you would already know how this is going to go, but I have to make some for an upcoming project anyway, so I thought I might as well uh, film a video on it. Knowing me, I'll probably stuff everything up along the way. You know, I know people like watching me fail, so we might as well take the risk that I might stuff everything up. So we've got some of this blue shit here. This is the ethylene glycol. Where does it say? Um, 1,074 grams per liter ethylene glycol. So there's not really any water added to that. This looks like the expensive stuff, which I'm using, but sorry, Dad, but it doesn't matter. Well, we're roughly 300 mils in there. That's a one liter flask. I'll add probably, oh, let's say 70 mils of sulfuric acid. That should be fine. Well, it's getting dark and ideally we'd be done by now, but we're not. There's still a lot more to go, so <laughs> I've got the light out. And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep going. And hopefully this stuff all doesn't tar up while I'm not watching. Because that would then ruin everything. A little while to go. Looks okay still. I've swapped out the flask just in case um, it starts to foam a lot. And uh, probably against what would be logical at this point is I've actually uh, put in maybe an extra 50 to 100 mils of ethylene glycol and another 20 mils of sulfuric acid because I want quite a bit of dioxane. It seems to be uh, traveling on fairly nicely, if quite slow. Um, it's very slow even with the temperature quite high and everything. So it's quite slow, but we'll let it go for a little longer and uh, see if we get any more. It should be fine. Ah, oh, fuck, it's probably two minutes late. If I got here two minutes earlier, I would have saved it, but fucking didn't. Oh, well. Always redistill it, maybe. As long as it fucking stops. Ah, oh, fuck me. It's now fucking midnight. It's starting to rain. And I've got to be up early in the morning, and my whole setup is fucking covered in fucking cancerous fucking shit. And righto, chemistry is a hobby, you're right, you know. Unbridled fucking joy. Here we go. Time to fucking clean this shit of a fucking mess. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Does anyone remember that? Alternatively, this is what happens when you quit while you're ahead. And this is what happens when you go on for just a bit longer. Yet twice as much product at half the purity. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is just, I'm actually just going to combine them together. Got another one litre flask there. Actually, I've just replaced all the glassware. I haven't cleaned any of the glassware before. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like having extra glassware just makes me more lazy because I don't clean the glassware and reuse it. I just stockpile it in the dirty pile and get new glassware out. Anyway, helps me be more efficient, I suppose. Anyway, I'm going to combine these two fractions together, add a tiny bit more sulfuric acid. Nerd Rage seems to think that um, there's some product which is like 2-methyl... Uh, dioxane kind of thing a five membered ring is a is a is a problem an impurity I'm not convinced it is and there'll be some sulfuric acid in here anyway that kind of distilled over with the tar but I'll add a little bit of sulfuric acid and, and read still because might as well it'll clean this up and it'll clean it all up generally because it's got a a few other byproducts in there all right we got some stuff coming over already it's just uh, the odd drip even though our temperature is just below 40 so really that's uh, a settle out of hide i mean i suppose it's a useful chemical but um 
It's a bitch to store and I don't have any immediate uses for it, so let it go to waste. Always a struggle to get my uh, figure out column in there and get it working fine, but that box seemed the appropriate size, so everything is okay. All the acetylaldehydes basically come over. It's sat at 40 degrees, but there's not much more coming through the column. So uh, I'm going to actually get rid of this column because with the water bath, it'll take far too long to get through the column because the water bath's only at, you know, 95 odd, 9,500 degrees. It basically won't come through this column. I don't have any other way of heating a litre very well, seeing as my flat bottom one litre flask is dirty. I could clean it. Oh, well, I just fucking, I'll get rid of the column and then put this out. Uh, um, on there and then just start collecting our uh, dioxane. Easy. All right, the temperature's falling, even though the uh, water bath is still at, you know, maximum temperature. So I kind of think we're running near the end of the dioxane. We don't seem to have heaps in the flask, which is annoying me because I feel like we've, I've done the thing, which I sometimes do, which is really annoying because I take so long to distill the thing because the water bath was slow. So it took probably like three or four hours to distill. Uh, and because the weather is really hot, it's like over 30 degrees. I hadn't been cooling this flask. So we actually were evaporating it off as we were distilling it because the room ambient temperature is so warm. For the last hour, I probably lost more product than I actually gained from this distillation. Poor oversight by me. I'm cooling it now badly, but you know, at least it's a start and you know, I had some alfoil blocking out the sun from just directly hitting it and just heating it up and boiling it off. I should have known better, but it's a bit in the flask, but I don't know, it's not coming over very well. So I think it's just a lot of water and glycol. All right, here's the yield of our azeotrope here. You can see there's more in the pot than there is what we got, which is always disappointing. Uh, it means the leftover stuff is just water and ethylene glycol. I must have distilled over heaps of ethylene glycol. Whether or not the pot temperature was just too hot and I just distilled all the glycol over, maybe there wasn't enough sulfuric acid or something like that. All right, so this is the azeotrope, and we don't want the azeotrope really. We actually want just the pure dioxane without the water. It's 13% water at the moment. So to purify it, we're going to add a shit ton of potassium hydroxide, which will kind of um, absorb the water in a sense and, and phase separate it so we can um, just phase separate, you know, physically remove the water from the dioxane layer. Potassium dioxide also has the advantage that it will get rid of a lot of the other impurities too. Any leftover acetylaldehyde or um, similar compounds will condense and so they'll form big long chains and that will separate out from our final dioxane when we do a final distillation. It's already looking very yellow, which Everyone knows I fucking hate. Yellow chemistry is bad. If your compound is yellow, it means it's impure. So all yellow is bad. I can I let it sit? Well, until I'm ready for it. So like, it might be a day, it might be three weeks. Who knows? Beautiful. So I was gonna like waste the stuff below 80 and then just collect it like 100, but man, everything's coming over at 80. Uh, maybe I'll re-dry it. So from our first attempt at a final distillation, we have a small amount of stuff that came over above 95. So that's probably dry enough for now anyway. 
Uh, and we've got a tiny bit of tar left in the flask here. Turn it off at this point, and it's probably only lose about five mils, and that's fine. Uh, and then the rest of our dioxane, I run through another potassium hydroxide wash. Looks like I got some more stuff out of it, so then we'll redistill that, and then hopefully everything's dry enough. But it's also hygroscopic, so even if I really, really dry it out right now, if I need it in five weeks time, it's probably just gonna bring that water back in again. Okay, so we're back again at the distillation apparatus. Uh, now we have a newly re-dried, well re-washed with the potassium hydroxide. In here, we're just gonna still discard the first little bit that comes over because that should contain most of the water. We've got our mostly dry stuff here. So hopefully this runs smoothly. I don't have a lot of light left, but what's new? It's such a typical extraction as I I stuff things up. I run out of daylight every distillation. Ah. When will I learn? When will I get good? All right, that's it. There's a tiny bit of tar at the bottom. Even more tar. God, there's always more tar. And uh, here's our yield here. And I didn't measure the amount of ethylene glycol I used initially at all. So we can't work out a yield, which is probably a good thing because it looks embarrassingly low. Because it looks like we only have, oh, let's say 150, 120 mils there. And we started with roughly 500 mils of ethylene glycol. So it's a bit of a disappointment. But the important thing is it's not yellow. No yellow in that at all. It's beautifully clear. So um, as long as the chemistry isn't yellow, we, we've done good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to store this over molecular sieves until we need it later on, in which case we'll probably have to react it with some sodium and uh, redistill it later on. But for now it's good enough, and um, I have a shit ton of glassware to clean up. They've all got tar on them, so I better get fucking started on that now. Um, thanks for watching. 